Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to show you how to paint this wisteria flowers. It's actually quite simple to paint, so let's begin by drawing it out to get acquainted with the basic shapes. So a cluster of these flowers are made out of individual tiny flowers with a silhouette which looks somewhat like a carrot with a wider top and it gets smaller as it gets towards the bottom. However, the density of flowers may vary depending on the growth stages and those branches may differ in thickness and also length just like any other natural flowers or plants. Now let's go over the shape of the flowers. Each long stem has branches with these flowers attached and the one that I'm drawing right now is more or less the shape of the flower and this will vary slightly as the angles change when the flower grow around the main stem. So here you can see what the angles look like as it slowly rotates and this rotation applies to the other side as well. Here I'm drawing out the folds just to show you how delicate the petals are but since I'm only going to paint this loosely, I'm not going to go into too much detail with the folds for the painting. Sometimes these flowers are only half open especially as it gets towards the bottom where the flowers are younger. The flowers become less and less open and right at the bottom they are mostly just small buds. And if the fully bloomed flowers are hard to paint you can also just paint a full cluster of the flower buds as well. But because this is going to be a loose painting I'm going to be simplifying the shapes of the flowers so they're much simpler to paint. Now I'm just going to quickly draw out how I'm going to place these flowers in the cluster. I like to think of an imaginary center before I paint, but because this is just a sketch, I'm going to draw it out so you get a better visualization. I personally like including variations in the painting, so I like to vary the growth stages as I have sketched out before. I mostly place the larger bloom flowers at the top. I'm just going to draw a few layers of this. Then as I get towards the bottom, that's where I try to vary them more by slowly closing some of the petals until I reach right at the very bottom where it's just practically very tiny buds. I like to also add more to the sides, adding some random flowers which just pop out by itself so it doesn't look too even and the composition becomes a bit more natural. You can practice sketching this out before painting so it's easier for you to understand the placement or you can also draw these out as reference before you paint freehand later to make it a bit easier for you to paint without having to decide on the go. Once I have the main cluster finished, at the top I like to add a few random smaller buds and I just find that this gives the stem a bit more of a natural feeling. As for the main branch of the tree, I like to create a very uneven one with a lot of movement and this is going to be painted in a thicker stroke than the rest of the tiny branches of the flowers and the leaves which will be smoother. And as for the leaves, they're very simple, they're just going to grow on either side of the stem which is very easy to paint. This is obviously a smaller version but you can do a few of these to figure out the composition as well by just using the silhouette of the flower to figure out the placement that you prefer. So before we start, let me just go over the colors that I'll be using, which are all from my Holbein set. Firstly here, I have Cobalt Violet Light, Quin Rose, Cerulean Blue, and this is optional, but Cerulean Blue with Quin Rose can make a similar color to the Cobalt Violet Light. And I also like the fact that the color like to split when they're mixed, which sometimes give a nice variation. Next, I have Ultramarine Deep, Mineral Violet, Permanent Green number 2, Sap Green, and Permanent Yellow Deep. So let's begin to paint. I've wet all of my colors here with water so they're easier to activate. And firstly, I'm going to take the Cobalt Violet Light as the first color. And as I mentioned before, you can also use a mixture of Cerulean Blue with Quin Rose to get a similar color. And that way you can also play around with the ratio of the color if you want the purple to be a bit more pink or a bit more blue. I'm just going to start by painting the basic shape of the bloomed flowers and you want to approximate the size and position of the cluster in your composition just like when we were drawing it out before. I'm starting with the top area where the flowers are more developed but I'm not starting right at the tip 
off the top part because the position of the flowers would be hidden slightly behind the ones underneath so I'm painting approximately midway from the top area and then painting around varying the angle as it gets towards the edges, the bottom and also the top. And I just find that this is an easier approach to getting the positions of the fully bloomed flowers for the top section of the cluster. So I'm done placing a few flowers, then I'm just mixing this dark purple color by using Quin Rose Mineral Violet and Ultramarine Deep. So again, I can adjust how pink or blue I want the purple to be, and I'm just placing this only near the tip of the smaller portion of the bloomed flowers. This is best to do while the surface is still a bit damp, so the color can spread out naturally, but not on a puddling surface like the one on the bottom left here because the paint will just spread along that puddle instantly. After I have a few flowers for the top section, I'm going to make the green off the stem and for that I used permanent green, sap green with mineral violet to mute the color. I'm making a medium consistency and I'm going to switch to my smaller brush here so I can use the very pointy tip to create the thin stems. This is also to indicate the center and also to approximate the length of the cluster. When I paint it out, I try to make space between some of the lines so I can place some flowers in front of the stems as well. I'm just going to paint more of the fully bloomed flowers but in smaller size. So we're still technically painting the top portion of the cluster and I try to slowly vary the size as I get towards the bottom. So I try to paint smaller flowers as I get towards the bottom portion. Just like before, I started with the light purple, then adding the darker purple for the tips. As I mentioned, it's better to add the darker purple at the stage while the surface is still damp, which is why I'm only painting a few flowers at a time. So here I'm just going to continue on painting the bottom portion as well. And I also like to add some purple around the edges of the larger flowers to separate the shapes if they're too close together. And also paint some odd ones out, just like how I drew it out before to make the composition look more natural. With the darker purple, I also like to paint some of the tips of the flower buds just to give it a bit more texture and a bit more form. And I also use this to paint smaller ones as well to vary the size. Next I'm going to create another dark purple, but this time I'm going to add a bit more Quin Red to make the purple a bit more pink. But I still want this to be very dark so I am using quite a thick consistency. And this is to paint the receptacle of some of the flowers, which is the area where the flower attaches with the petal and the stem. Most of the light colored flowers should be completely dry by now, so I'm going to take the same color mixture in a slightly thicker consistency to paint a line in the middle of the larger bloomed flowers for a bit of added detail. On top of the detail that we just painted, I'm also going to add a thick consistency of permanent yellow deep at the bottom of those larger flower petals as a pop of color and this is also why it's important for that part of the petal to be fairly light in color. And then I'm going to finish everything off with a few uneven petals on the top and around the cluster and that's pretty much it for the first one and I'm going to do the same thing for the second cluster of flowers as well. Like before, I started with Cobalt Violet Light or a mixture of Cerulean Blue with Quin Rose. Here, I'm just approximating the position but after a while, I also realized that I made a mistake in the position of the flowers. I wanted to be closer to the first flower so I'm slowly repositioning the flower so it shifts the placement of the flower to be closer and you can do this to correct your painting when this happens but of course like any other troubleshooting there's always a limit to how much you can push that position.
It was also a bit confusing for me because now the center has slightly shifted. So after I painted a few flowers, I decided to paint the stem to help as indication for the center point and that way it's much easier for me to work around without making the cluster look too wonky. And after that I'm just going to continue on just like what I did with the previous cluster by adding the flowers around the main stem. Ideally, I want the top portion of the flowers to be lighter than the bottom because I find that the contrast and value gives more interest to the painting and I think the rest of this is quite easy to follow from here so I'll get back to you again when I start to paint the branches and the rest of the elements. I forgot to mention this but for some of the stems I like to just follow up using the dark purple color. I think that the base green that I put down is vivid enough against the purple and that dark purple will just add a bit more definition to some of the details of the stem. Once I have both of the flowers, I'm going to move on to the tree branch. I used the same green mixture as the stem, but I added more mineral violet to the mixture to turn it into a dark brown color. And for this, I'm using a very thick consistency because I want the tree branch to be painted with minimal strokes. And I'm switching to my other brush now because I do want to produce a slightly thicker line. And I slowly move the tip of my brush as I get towards the end of the branch to create thinner delicate lines. As I sketched out before, I want the smaller branches to be very thin in comparison, so I went back to my smaller brush to paint a few younger branches where I can attach some of the leaves. For the leaves, I'm not worrying too much about them. I added more permanent green to the previous mixture to bring it back to a muted green tone instead of a brown. And I'm just painting flat shapes because I don't want the leaves to take away too much from the flowers. They should just serve as part of the decorative element for this particular composition, but of course you can also add more leaves if that's your main intention. So this is where I start to attach the cluster of flowers to the branch. I'm using the same mixture from before, somewhere in the middle of the brown and the green tone. And I like to paint uneven jagged lines while also adding some younger flower buds. And I feel like this looks more natural and the larger flowers doesn't look like it's too abruptly placed on the stem.
Okay, as I'm editing this, I realize I forgot to attach the second cluster of flowers to the branch, so don't forget to do that for yours. And I also decided to add an additional small cluster of flowers at the tip of the branch, but for this one, I'm just using younger flowers, so they're mostly flower buds coming from either side of the stem. But I'm still going to treat it the same way by using the dark purple for the tips and also the receptacle to connect the flowers and the stems together. For some of the leaves, I like to also use a thinner consistency sometimes when the leaves are layered on top of each other so they don't become a single silhouette but separate shapes. So that's it for the flowers, but like usual, you guys know that I love to finish everything off with splatters. And for this, I'm using the light purple color and I'm just going to tap my brushes together to give the finishing effect. You can also paint some dots if the splatters are not landing on specific places you want it to drop. And that's pretty much it. This is the finished painting and despite the detailed look, it's actually quite simple to paint. It's just one of those relaxing and repetitive paintings. Like usual, all of the tools as well as links to my social media pages will be listed in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!